Good morning, everyone. My name is Camila Scaff. I'm a missionary in Australia. I am originally from Brazil. I've lived more than 10 years in New York City where I attended the Greenwich Village Church. So I was part of your division. And I'm today here with my leader, Pastor Wayne Krause and the SPD or the South Pacific Division team. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm be, I'm, <laughs> thank you. I would like to invite you to reach out to you, the bowls in the middle of your table. Grab something sweet because I'm going to be talking about food pharmacy. I don't want you to be drilling on your tables there. So please grab something to eat while you're watching this. I'm going to guess which, which one I have to. Yes. So food pharmacy. What is food pharmacy? Food pharmacy is something that offers delicious, beautiful, healing foods. It is a cafe and an eatery in Newcastle or Lake Macquarie City, about 40 minutes, 45 minutes from Avondale University in Australia, in the state of New South Wales. It is also a learning center, a wellness learning about healthy living. It is a cooking school. As you can see that in this photo, we have the whole staff of an Adventist school 10 minutes away from there because everyone is interested to learn how they can connect with the families in their school. And because we're successful, successfully delivering cooking classes in the community, they came to learn with us and to practice this method as well to connect with our neighbors. It is also a friendship hub. It is a family connection place. It is a place for journey to hone us together. And it is just for six months, also a church plant. I'm gonna be inviting here my husband, Pastor Joseph Scaff, because this ministry is a collaboration between myself as a missionary, as a passion for health ministries and the health message that is given to us with a pastor. Now, I couldn't get any other pastor to join me, so I had to marry one. <laughs> so Pastor uh, Joseph and I and our kids, two kids, they were born in Australia. Um, we together founded the food pharmacy. Um, we also have amazing chefs and nutritionists, and these ladies there with me are responsible for reproducing the healthy, delicious, beautiful recipes that you're going to see here, as well as helping me to run the cooking classes in the community and to lead the cafe team at Food Pharmacy. So we've got there myself, Lauren, Emily, and Casey, beautiful people. So... The vision of food pharmacy started in our hearts with the desire to have a, the, a place to have. Um, so food pharmacy started with a desire to witness God's promise to provide complete healing when we match health education and discipleship, restoring people into his image, physical, mental, and spiritual. We are located here at the Atun Health Center. It's a whole integrative um, health center, a clinic where we have doctors, specialists. It is led by a Christian man. And this Christian man I met by meeting people in the community that were interested in taking the message of healing and salvation to other people. And so we rented, we leased a space in the main floor. And that's where right in between that red um, uh, rectangle, that's where the food pharmacy is located. We also have um, started this because we inspired by the Ministry of Healing. Uh, we talk about meeting people where they're at. And as Joseph is going to be sharing shortly here, we have found the need in the community to bring not only health in terms of physical, but also social, connecting with people. You know, when we decided to become missionaries, we thought we were going to end up in Africa or Iraq or somewhere else that was most needed. And God led us to Australia. And we never understood why until we started mingling with the community and understand that they need the friendship, the connection. They need it to be loved, as we've talked about here. What else, Pastor Joseph? What was inspired us? 
Yeah, so we got inspired. We wanted to see what would happen if we followed the instructions that have been given to Ellen White a hundred and something years ago. Were they still valid? Would there still be something that could that could um, be useful? Uh, we're talking about 150 years pretty much after those testimonies have been given. Having many cafes open and closed and, and with, without much success in terms of... Um, 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 evangelism, but we, we re realized that we had that, that passion, that burning in our hearts, and we decided to give it a go. And one of the things that we realized that, at least in Australia, there's a few ministries that always will have traction. When they were working with kids, children's ministries always have traction. Uh, sports ministries with teenagers, um, you know, food pantry has a lot of traction. But health, we also realized that we will always find a lot of people interested in, in learning how to become healthier, how to eat better, how to to live uh, healthier lives as well. So we decided to go with that horse. So the location was strategically chosen because, first of all, we had a businesswoman that had been in the area for over 10 years with his clinic, very successfully making a difference in the community. We also, as a, you can see here, Dr. Libby on that photo, she's one of the GPs in the clinic who prescribes her patients to attend the health programs that we run there. So what is the area like? Why did we decide to start with such a ministry there? Yeah, just a quick review. This is Australians, uh, Australia's religious landscape. Australia is a post-Christian country. Um, about 65% uh, uh, of the population uh, identifies as non-Christian or as non-religious or as non-spiritual, whatever you, you want. So there's 45% that defines as Christians, and out of that, only 7%. So we're talking about a country that is very highly secular. A lot of people have been traumatized with the church. And as post-Christians, they kind of say, okay, I know what this whole Christianity thing is all about. I understand that there's this whole story about Jesus dying for my sins. But you know what? I don't like it. My parents don't like it. I think that the church is full of hypocrites. So we have this extra barrier where we have to undo a lot of the traumas and the damage that Satan has done in people his minds in regards to the work of Jesus Christ. In other words, our community is a very secular, well-educated, wealthy, and people that are worldly. Really, really hard to connect, especially as soon as you walk in and you talk about the Bible, God, or any kind of religion, they're not interested. So we decided to find things or ways for them to become interested. A lot of people in that area are interested in spirituality in terms of well-being, feeling well, the feelings. And a lot of people are battling with anxiety, depression, and loneliness. So we started promoting change. So we invite people to walk along with us into a journey of changing and feeling well. So different programs. Some of you know the CHIP program, the Complete Health Improvement Program. It's also offered in the U.S. Other programs that we partner with, the South Pacific Division by Elio Wellness, Enhance Your Gut Health, the LIFT Project by Dr. Darren Morton, and Dr. Nedley program, Optimize Your Brain. So a range of pro programs that we run on the evenings at the cafe location. We also run workshops to empower change. Once people start coming to these programs, which are run weekly basis from six to 10 weeks, they want to change. And we are now inviting them to learn new trades, like making bread, making desserts, or making foods that are gonna help them in their journey. And we also have the health clubs. We have weekly meetings, walking meetings, cooking clubs, gardening clubs. It's a place where people can meet together. We have meetings in person, and we also have meetings online. So the great thing is that while we had COVID, we were able to continue our programs online as well. So we are trying to do the hybrid model. So we just wanted to show you a quick story of one. There are many, many stories. We have thousands and thousands of people that have gone through our program or have somehow been touched by this ministry in our community. But we want to share a story of one, what we call Aussie bloke. And Wayne know what I mean. It's not the typical person that would walk into a uh, church, let alone to a health program. So I, I chose the story of Glenn for you to hear today. My name's Glenn, and I'd lost my sensation from my knees down. I went, finally went to the doctors, and he did every sort of test he could on my legs to find out what I could feel, and I couldn't feel anything. 
So I went and had all these blood tests and came back and he said, no, right now we want you to go to, for other tests, um, which were alt ultrasounds, which were very inconclusive because the ultrasounds couldn't work on my organs um, because they deteriorated to such an, a point. And uh, so finally I came back to the doctors and he said, right, I've worked out what's going on. Basically, um, a heap of your organs are failing and we need to do something. So he said, no problem, I can give you pills. I said, you'll take a big handful of pills for the rest of your life and that'll probably resolve the problem. Or you could try a lifestyle change. To me, I didn't know what a lifestyle change was, but it certainly sounded better than a big handful of pills. So I decided to start this CHIP program and uh, see if it could help me. I came to an intro night to find out about this lifestyle change that he talked about, and it sounded a bit daunting. A lot of the foods I really liked were probably apparently not that good for me. So I didn't know if I really wanted to do that, but it still sounds better than, than a handful of pills. How did CHIP affect my life? Dramatically, I would say. It brought me back to having a body that is functioning correctly. When you do the CHIP program, they ask you to get certain blood tests done to see where we stand, which I obviously already had from the doctors. At the end of the CHIP program, we redid the, the blood tests and there wasn't one of them that hadn't come back into the, the normal, whereas all of them at the beginning were way into the abnormal. That's probably the medical side of it. The other side of it was I felt a lot better. I realised also that um, during the day I was, I was a lot more energetic and and that going to the toilet was a lot more pleasant experience. <laughs> so the CHIP program has enabled my life to be more full, I guess. And I guess there's no way to know this, but I'm hoping that also means I have a longer life and a better quality of life. In the Seeds website, they offer a few different courses and CHIP is one of them. I also did the LIFT course, which was all about mental health and good living. For me, that was that that made a dramatic improvement in my own mental health. It was a fun program. You learned how that can be put into a normal lifestyle and improve your mental health. Um, and for me, yeah, that was wonderful. And that's, that's the only extra course I've done, but there's others that I want to do. CHIP infected my life so much that I decided I had to give back. I now volunteer to help the ladies run the CHIP program. So I see different types of people coming to, to CHIP. We recently just had a final night where people looked at their health and their blood tests. And I've got to say, I think it was 100% of people that did the course had improved in the course. And some hadn't come for their health, some had just come because they were inquisitive. And even they had an improvement. So I, I think it's, I do it because it definitely works. Glenn. The story of Glenn is that he came because his doctor told him to come. And now he's involved. He volunteers four days a week. He helps us to facilitate this. And he helps us with one of the most important programs that we have. It's called the Journey to Wholeness. It's where we connect people that are coming for health, simply health, physical. And we introduce Jesus as the solution for their traumas, for their mental illnesses, and that's when we introduce people to Jesus and to discipleship. And we introduce them to Pastor Joseph. Now, Glenn goes and with you once a week, and he's studying the Bible with others. Is that right? That's right. So Glenn studies the Bible with us like twice a week. He, he's inviting other people to study with us. And we want to say this. We love people with no strings attached. And our job is not to make people healthier in their way to hell. We don't want to do this. So, but we, so what do we do? How do we find the balance there? We want to offer them the best life that they can live. And that gives us opportunities of journeying together with them so that we can, uh, God can give us opportunities to witness to them and to invite them to, to know and to hear about the story of Jesus. We, we are about to end basically a few of our numbers here. The cafe is selling about $20,000 per month and it keeps growing. Uh, we have over a thousand different interactions per month. Our church plant, we started six months ago and have about 25 people. 
about only eight of them are Adventists. So a lot of them were actually, you know, we, we looking for a church before. So we're reclaiming them back into God's mission. And just to finalize a few things here, I'll just jump really quickly. Um, what we have we learned so far, number one, health attracts a lot of different people from both young and old. Uh, we wanted to create an environment to facilitate, facilitate these loving relationships. Number three, to have a clear pathway from health to healing to the healer, Jesus Christ. And uh, fourth, uh, part of our church plant is weekly coaching our lay people for mission. So we sit there and we're asking about how are we going to reach your friends, your neighbors uh, for Jesus. And my job as a pastor, a big part of my job is to coach them on this week-to-week -week basis, not only to coach but to pray, to give them tools so that we can all be participating in this, this, this most amazing work that God has given us. And um, that's it for us, uh, guys. Thank you so much for, uh, for your attention. And I have a question for you yes. before we go. What is your church going to do to bring healing, physical, mental, and spiritual to your community? Amen. Amen.